And with the election just a fortnight away, health has been the central campaign issue so far. The pressures on the hospital system and the problem of ambulance ramping has prompted billions of dollars in promises. But the causes and solutions for this complex issue aren't straightforward. In tonight's special report, Isabel Damon looks at a problem which has cost some South Australian families dearly. Marina Obiativo was a caring and outgoing hairdresser, an adored wife, mother and nonna. She's just very lively and bubbly and very open and honest and direct. You always knew where you stood with her. The 60-year-old died from a heart attack last August. An ambulance should have arrived at her Myrtle Bank home within 16 minutes. It got there in 30, too late to save her life. We did um, get to say goodbye one last time on the floor um, of her room. And, yeah, she was taken away. The SA Ambulance Service later apologised and acknowledged to the family the death could have been avoided. I often think about what she's missing out on or what my son's missing out on. Just mum stuff. Always someone to talk to. Until, you know, what you're going through, you know. Ambulance delays can be devastating for patients and families and health professionals like Dr Michael Edmonds. When I started my training many years ago, there was always room in the, in the department, there was room in the hospital um, and ramping wasn't a thing at the hospitals I was working at. What started as a last resort became common at Flinders Medical Centre about a decade ago. I can't stand here or sit here you know, with a hand on a, my heart and say it won't occur again. Soon the practice moved to the former RAH and Queen Elizabeth. Their grave concerns have been expressed by doctors. Even a new hospital didn't fix it. A traffic jam no one wants to see. It's a traffic jam that changes month to month but it's got progressively worse. Four years ago, SA Ambulance crews spent around 650 hours waiting outside hospitals to offload patients. Last October, it was more than 2,800 hours, and last month, it was around 1,500. And as so-called ramping has increased, so have ambulance response times. Two years ago, ambulances got to most emergency cases in 22 minutes. Last year, it was 32. Ramping is difficult to address because it's caused by multiple factors. The biggest cause of ramping is access block, that is not being able to get people into the hospital. And part of that is because people aren't able to leave the hospital at the other end of their, their journey through the health system. People are still in hospitals where they could actually be in an aged care facility or being managed at home or in another facility by uh, an NDIS provider. That congestion in turn creates problems for those trying to get help. Emergency departments have become increasingly populated by patients with acute mental health issues with nowhere else to go. The system's failing this group in particular. And none of this is unique to South Australia. And certainly Victoria, New South Wales and even Queensland. But even Western Australia was having issues with ramping even without having a lot of COVID cases. More beds, doctors, nurses and ambulances are often sold as the solution. But experts say it'll only work if coupled with more investment in aged care and community-based options to keep people out of hospital in the first place. It's got to be, I think, a bipartisan discussion and it's got to be an issue that all governments look at. I have to have hope that we can do better that with investment in the right places, we can improve on the system. Improvements too late for some. Isabel Damon, ABC News, Adelaide.